Is live TV doomed? I mean, on the one hand, with tons of people largely stuck at home these days, it seems like the perfect time to scoop up a bunch of new streaming subscribers. But on the other hand, are those new subscribers gonna go for an expensive live TV service? Well, we're waiting for second quarter subscriber numbers to be released by most companies next month. And this time, I'm watching those like a hawk, and I'm gonna tell you why. So, let's dive in. Now, as we dive into this subject, don't forget, if you enjoy what we do here, subscribe. I much appreciate the support. Give this video a like if you enjoy it. All right, now let's talk about live TV in the age of Corona. Now, what I'm talking about here is mostly gonna be streaming services, although it will apply some to traditional cable and satellite TV packages as well. And I might touch on those a little bit later. But first, let's talk about live TV streaming services like Sling TV and Hulu Live. Compared to their on-demand cousins like Netflix or Disney Plus, these services are expensive, like four or five or eight times the cost of the on-demand stuff. So why in the world would someone cut the cord just to pay that much to still get TV delivered on someone else's schedule? Well, there are two things live TV can offer you that it's tough to get from on-demand services, again, like those Netflix and Disney Plus. The first thing you get from live TV is sports. And sports is, uh, well, it's basically canceled this year, right? Well, it's half canceled. The MLB is in talks to play the second half of its season starting in July, but then that stalled out and then it restarted and then it stalled out again and so on. Now we'll just have to see. Maybe by the time this video comes out, they'll have an agreement. The NFL will come up later this year, but that's a cold weather sport, which in the age of Corona means that there's a good chance it'll just be on the chopping block this winter. NASCAR races have been consistently postponed. Now we're getting some races with an empty stands policy. Similarly, the US Open Tennis Tournament will start at the end of August, but they'll have empty stands. Golf is probably happening, but I don't care. It's golf. Meh, anyway, the NBA will play a few more games at, all in a bubble at Disney World, go figure. The WNBA is gonna be kind of a similar situation, just a, a short season plus a postseason. So anyway, the point here is, I'm sorry, I kind of rambled there a little bit, but sports is a shell of itself in the midst of all this COVID stuff. So the only thing left that can save the live TV format, like it or not, is cable news. Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, and all their affiliated side channels are seeing viewership spikes in 2020 thanks to basically an insane year for news. I mean, we had impeachment, yeah, that was just this year, COVID-19, and the George Floyd-inspired protests. So whether the spike for cable news ratings is a good or bad thing, well, look, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. You can decide that for yourself. Anyway, the point is, everything I just talked about is just place setting for what's to come next month. New subscriber numbers for live TV providers. This is what I'm really interested in. So here's where the numbers stand right now. We'll just put, throw up a chart, right? Somebody will throw up a chart. I can't do it. Somebody will do it. Anyway, here's where the numbers stand right now for live TV streaming services. It's led by Hulu Live with 3.3 million subscribers. That's up quite a bit, thanks in large part probably to Disney Plus. But Sling TV is down to 2.3 million. They've been losing subscribers already. YouTube TV is hanging tough at around 2 million. AT&T TV Now is under a million. They've lost a bunch of subscribers over, over the last couple of years. And Fubo TV is small but growing. But yeah, they're still pretty small. So. What happens as this, uh, how to put this delicately, batch crazy year continues to unfold? I have no idea. Will the lack of sports and the need to tighten budgets have people kicking their live TV habit? Will there be a surge in cancellations for cable or satellite and streaming services? Or will a few sports and a whole lot of cable news keep all of this afloat? I don't know, and I can't wait to find out. The suspense is terrible. So if you want to hear all about it, then I strongly suggest that you subscribe because I'm going to keep track of all this. You know, I don't even watch that much live TV anymore, but I'm still really interested in all of these numbers. So I'm curious where you stand too. So hit the comments, let me know. Are you still a live TV person? I'll be interested to hear about it. So maybe I'm the weirdo. I don't know. Yeah, hit the comments.